the boy on graves and road. Kelly Ryan was making dinner. Her 10 years old son Benjamin was watching television in the living room. Or at least she thought he was. Kelly, Benny boy, do you want black beans or red beans? Ben, red beans. Mama, Kelly, don't do that Ben. You scared me half to that. You are going to get it now. Narrator, Ben had come up quality right behind her. Sound, Kelly, I will get back to you. Stinker, narrator, Kelly goes to the phone. But as soon as she lays her hand on it, the ringing stops. Kelly, how strange. Oh, the beans, narrator. Kelly turns her attention back to cooking. As soon as she does, the phone rings again. Kelly, honey, can you get that? Ben, hello, oh, hi, yes, I remember. Sure, it sounds fun. Let me ask my mom. Can you hold? She might want to talk to your mom. Oh, um, okay, see you tomorrow. Kelly, Ben, your rice and beans are on the table. Let's eat. Kelly, so what was that call about? Ben, that was Wallace Gray. You know him from class. He wants to play tomorrow. Can I go home with him after school? Please, mom, I get bored around here waiting for you after work. Kelly, but Ben, I don't even know his parents maybe. I should talk to them. Ben, you can't, mom. He was with his babysitter. He said his parents wouldn't be home until late tonight and they would leave before he went to school in the morning. Please, mom, Wallace lives right over on Graves and Road. It's five minutes walk from here. Please, Kelly. Well, okay, what's so great about this guy anyway? You have got a ton of friends to play with. Ben, I know, but Wallace is just different. He's got a lot of imagination. Narrator, the school week passes and Ben starts to go home almost every day with Wallace. Kelly notices a change in her son. He seems tired and withdrawn. His eyes do not seem to really look at her. They seem lifeless. On Friday night, she decides they need to have a talk. Kelly, sweetie, what's going on with you? You seem so tired and far away. Is something wrong? Did you and your new friend have a fight? Ben, no mom, we have been having a great time. There is nothing wrong with us. Why don't you like Wallace? You don't even know him, but you don't trust him. Kelly, Benjamin, what are you talking about? I don't dislike Wallace. You are right. I don't know him. You just don't seem like yourself. You have been very quiet the past few nights. I'm sorry, mom. I guess I'm just tired. I have a great time with Wallace. We play games like cops and robbers, but they seem so real that half of the time I feel like I'm in another world. It's hard to explain. It's like, it's like, Kelly... I think the word you are looking for is intense. Ben, yeah, that's it. It's intense. Kelly, well, tell me about today. What kind of game did you play? Ben, we were trained robbers or Wallace was. I was a station manager. Wallace was running through a long train from car to car. He had stolen a lot of money and gold from the passengers. I was chasing right behind him, moving as fast as I could. Finally, he jumps out of the train into the station to make his escape, but I block his path. He grabs a woman on the station platform. She screams, no, no, but he yells, let me through, or she dies. So I let him go. Kelly, what happened then? Ben, well, that's what was weird and like you said, intense. Wallace threw the lady onto the trucks and laughed. He said, that's what evil characters do in games. They always do the worst. Narrator. Later after Ben went to bed, Kelly turned on the 11 o'clock news. She was only half listened as the as she prepared a list of things to do the next day on Halloween. Kelly, let's see grocery shopping, Halloween decorating, dog to the groomer, hardware store, clean up the garden, news announcer. The victim, who has not been identified, was killed instantly. Report says it appears she was pushed off the station platform into the path of the oncoming train. It happened during rush hours today. Some witness reported seeing two boys running and playing near the woman, but police says they did not see any images like that on security cameras at the station. In other news, there was more trouble today as workers protest outside the home end. Kelly, no, it can't be. The station is an hour away. They couldn't have gotten there. How could they? It's just a coincidence. Narrator, the wind blew low and lonely that night. Kelly slept little. She dreamed she was waiting for Ben at a train station. Then she saw him on the other side running with another little boy. 
It must be Wallace, she thought. The little boy went in and out of view. Then all of a sudden, he stopped and looked across the tracks. Directly at her, he had no face. Narrator, Saturday morning was bright and sunny, a cool October day. Kelly made Ben eggs and toast and watched him eat happily. Kelly, you know Benny boy... A woman did get hurt at the train station yesterday. She actually got hit by a train. Isn't that strange? Narrator. She looked at Ben. Ben, what do you mean, Mom? Kelly. Well, you and Wallace were playing that game yesterday. About being at a train station, you said he threw a woman off the platform and she was killed by a train. Narrator. Kelly felt like a fool even saying the words. She was speaking to a 10 years old who had been playing an imaginary game with another 10 year old. What was she thinking? Ben. <coughs> I said we played that yesterday. I did. Hmm, no, we played that a few days ago. I think it was just a really good game. Really intense. Yesterday we played pirates. I got to be a Captain Frank on the pirate ship. The uh, Wallace was Davy, the first mate, but he tried to rebel and take over the ship. So I made him walk the plank. Davy walked off into the sea and drowned. Wallace told me I had to order him to walk the plank. He said that's what evil pirates do. Kelly, I guess he's right. I don't know any pirates, but I do hear they are pretty evil. Ben, so uh, can I play with Wallace today when you are doing your errands? Please, mom, I don't want to go shopping and putting up Halloween decorations. Kelly, oh, whatever, I guess so. I will pick you up at Wallace's house at about 5.30 so you can get ready for tick or treating. Where does he live again? Ben, Graves and Road. I don't know the street number, but there are only two houses on each side. His is the second one on the left. Kelly, okay, I can find that easy enough. Do you still want me to pick up a ghost costume for you? Ben, yep. Oh, and guess what, mom? Wallace says he's a ghost too. I suppose we will haunt the neighborhood together. Narrator. Everywhere Kelly went that day was crowded. She spent an hour and a half just at the market. When she got home, decorating the house for Halloween was difficult. But finally, she had it all up the way she wanted. Kelly. Oh gosh, five already. I don't even have Ben's costume. Narrator. She jumped into her car and drove to Wilson Blolvert. The party store was just a few blocks away. Kelly soon found the ghost costume that Ben wanted. She bought it and walked out of the store. Aileen, hey Kelly, long time no see. How Benjamin doing? Kelly, Aileen, wow, it's great to see you. How's Matt? We have been so busy since the school year started. We haven't seen anyone. Aileen, Matt's good. Well, he broke his arm last month, so no sports for him. It is driving him crazy, but at least he's got a lot of time for school now. Aileen, anyway, Matt was wondering why Benny Boy never comes by anymore. We saw him running around the neighborhood after school last week. It looks like he's having fun, but he's always alone. We don't need to set up a play date. Ben should know that. You just tell him to come by anytime. Kelly, Wait, wait a minute. Alone? What do you mean alone? He started playing with a new friend, Wallace. Somebody after school, like every day this past week. Ben hasn't been alone. Wallace Gray, that's it. Do you know him? Does Matt? Ellie. Oh, Kel. Kelly, I'm sure. He's a fine kid. I don't know him, but don't worry. Ben's got great taste in friends. We know that. I'm sure he wasn't really alone. He was probably just playing hide and seek or something. I didn't mean to worry you. I guess everybody is on edge because of what happened to the Godwin boy this morning. Narrator. Kelly suddenly felt cold and scared. What, Godwin boy? And what happened to him? She was not sure she wanted to know, but she had to ask. Eileen, Frank Godwin's youngest boy, Javi, the five-year-old. You know Frank, we call him captain. He used to be a ship captain. Well, this morning, the rescue squad found Javi in Black Art Lake. They also found a little boy boat that his dad made for him. Devi and his dad named it the Urg. Devi must have been trying to sail it. It's so sad. Kelly, oh wait, his dad. Aileen, yes, Devi drowned. Kelly, where is Black Heart Lake? 
Aileen, it's night of graves and road right behind that little cemetery. That's why they call it graves and Kelly, where are you going? Kelly, I have got to get Benjamin. Narrator, Kelly raced down Main Street. She had no idea who Wallace Gray was or how he was involved in any of this. But she did not trust him and she knew her child was in danger. Finally, she was at Graves and Road, Ben only two houses on each side. Narrator, she remembered that Ben had told her, Aileen, right behind that little cemetery, narrator, and that and what Aileen had told her. Kenny got out of the car and walked down the street. She looked around. Ben, it's the second one on the left. Narrator, she could see the lake. Some fog was coming up as the sky darkened on this Halloween right. But there was no second house. Instead, what lay before her was grass and large white stones. The cemetery. Kelly walked through the gate into the yard of graves. Kelly, Ben, narrator, no answer. She kept walking. Kelly, Ben, answer me. I know you are here. Narrator, again, no answer. But the white blue and some leaves began to dance around the handstone. Kelly walked slowly toward the grave. Suddenly, the sky blackened. So dark, she could not see anything. She felt a force pushing at her. It tried to push her away from the grave, but she knew she had to stay. Kelly, Benjamin, on or this is your mother, came out the second narrator. No one answered except for the sound of the blowing wind. The darkness lifted, silvery moonlight shone down directly onto the old gravestones in front of her. But Kelly already knew whose name she would see. Kelly, Wallace Gray, October 31st, 1900 to October 31st, 1910. Some are best when laid to rest. Narrator, Kelly took a deep breath. Then, Kelly, Chris, Wallace Gray, this play date is over. Give me back my son. Walls, you are in time out. Narrator, suddenly, the ground shoots upward like a small volcano. Soil sticks of worms fly over Kelly's head and drain down again, followed by her son, who lands beside her, Ben, coughing, choking. Kelly, Ben, 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 coughing, choking. Mom, Mom, are you there? I can't see. All this dirt in my eyes. Kelly, Ben, I'm here. I'm here, baby. Right here. Oh, sweet Benny boy. Can you breathe? Are you really okay? What happened? How long were you in there? Ben, I don't know, Mom, but I didn't like it. I didn't like where Wallace lives. I want to go home. Oh, Kelly. Oh, me too. Sweetie, come on, Ben. Put your arm around me. Come on. Sounds. Ben. And Mom, one more thing. Kelly, what is it, Ben? Ben, I don't want to be a ghost for Halloween. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more stories. Thank you.